Yo. Damn. What's up guys, it's Chris and I am still tearing down the shop. I've got rid of a ton of stuff, but I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for the comments. Like, of course there's bound to be people that are not happy about everything that I do, but a whole bunch of you guys said some amazing, nice things. So it's the kind of stuff that's like the oxygen that keeps me going. So for the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. I've got some really cool stuff. I wanna highlight my buddy that is shooting some parts. We're gonna go check him out. That's Nico over at K2 Concepts. We're gonna come back and we're gonna open these WRX parts that he dipped in carbon for a project coming up. It's gonna be dope. Nico just asked me about the lights, but I think, I think I really wanna go see them now because it seems like they're pretty excited, but here's their sweet little paint. They got two of them here. It's why I don't paint. Why would I paint? These guys are all about it. Let's take these things into the office and see what is hiding. Cause I'm excited. Oh. Yo, that looks so good. Jeez, look at that. Ooh, look how crazy. If you have a WRX and you have custom lights, I. That is, I've never seen this. And I've seen everything done to WRX, like everything you can imagine. You don't really need to do a bunch of crazy stuff. To be honest, this with some demonized and etched lenses would be so crazy and you could do it on otherwise stock lights. And then we just look amazing. I crazy impressed by it my boy Nico. So I'm gonna have him come in. We're gonna talk with him about this process, about what it's like to do it yourself. I know my boy Jay at Sinister does this stuff as well. And of course, Mr. K2 himself, Jim, he is the master at all of this stuff. So the fact that we get to talk to the person that's learned the absolute most from Jim is Nico, his son. Uh, it's gonna be really cool because that's who I've been having paint my products here the last year and a half now. I trust these guys, they're amazing. They're way, way, way better at all the little detail stuff that you have to be good at to do paint. So yeah, hopefully that'll help you if you're gonna shoot some paint yourself. What up, I'm about to open something super sick. I think you're gonna like it. Let me know what you think. That is a carbon fiber dipped bezel for a Subaru WRX. So it looks just like carbon fiber but it's all done through hydrographics, dipping this in a big giant tank with a pattern floating on the surface. And then if you do it just right, like a G, like my guys at K2 Concepts did, comes out looking sick, looking real. And boy, is this an awesome project that I don't even have a buyer for. I just wanted to do it. Stoked. Okay, so I just put these things on TikTok. It was pretty cool. I, I think that little video is gonna do well. And if you're not a 14 year old girl and you're not on TikTok, get on there anyway. There's some cool posts. Now we're gonna talk to Nico. All right, so we got Nico here from K2 Concepts, but we're gonna talk about some really cool stuff coming up. I think my man's gonna start posting some stuff on TikTok and Instagram and a bunch of other things. I'd love you guys to go follow his account. So check out the description below. I'm gonna link up everything. Dude has learned all sorts of stuff about hydro dip, custom painting all these parts for me. And he was talking about something. He was checking these things out right now. Tell me again about the little, the little hole that you got there. Okay, so when it comes to hydrographics, the problem is, when you dip something through a part, there's gonna be air pockets because just the nature of dipping something, there's air gonna be in between it and if it gets caught, it's gonna create a void. So in here, what we did is we drilled a little about, I think eight thirty seconds hole, just a tiny little hole. It has to be big enough that it lets air out enough, but not too big that it's gonna be just a giant hole. As you can see, it made a nice little area. So the air escaped and the pattern went in as far as it could because if, if not, there'd be probably about here, there'd be a giant 
spot where the air got trapped and the pattern couldn't you know, adhere to the part. So it's just a little thing that we've learned over the years. If it's a big gap, big hole, usually you gotta put a little little uh, drill spot in there so that way air can escape. Makes sense. So with the paint and all that stuff, what? how much of the the base coat and all that stuff shows through? Like what color did you have to uh, This is what we call um, Shelby. So it's a mixture of silver and black. The metallic gunmetal basically is kind of the equivalent of it. And anytime you see that little square is clear. So that is the paint underneath. So really you can see a lot of the paint underneath. Dope. Looks super good. Uh, what about the painting? What what kind of stuff have you noticed just from the headlight parts, the little nooks and crannies? Things are difficult. Here's one that you shot. You really got to make sure if there's a little spot, if you're painting one way, it looks fine. But if you, the second you turn it, there's going to be little gaps in there. So, you know, you got to make sure you paint into the gaps too. You know, if you paint, you know, just one way, there's going to be gaps up here. So you got to, you know, really flip it around, make sure you're hitting all the angles and then get the light into it brand new to it maybe get like a little flashlight or something maybe check make sure you get light in this part sunlight's good that sunlight's amazing crazy stuff yeah because you know it'll look good under you know orange light but second you get in the sunlight you're like oh i didn't spray enough here there's you know not enough paint on it uh, and what, what do you feel like the major differences between like a, a legit gun versus like a run of like super cheap harbor freight stuff versus rattle can when it comes to rattle can a lot of problems when it comes to parts are the aerosol, depending on the how expensive rattle can you get, because there are expensive rattle cans out there of really expensive paint and clear because we've used them before. And the cheaper it is, usually the aerosol reacts to parts very negatively. Like if you don't care if you're doing run of the mill kind of thing, you can get a pretty good spray, but you got to make sure you're nice and consistent sprays. Make sure that you no, know, you don't get your finger too far in front of the spray pattern, which is going to screw it up and create little nicks and spots that. You know, it's not going to look good. It's not going to a nice smooth pass. Harbor Freight, using them in the past and everything, you you can make it work, but at the end of the day, you're basically fighting to learn on a bad on bad equipment. So it's like, you know, trying to use a cheap, cheap drill and it doesn't have the power to drill through a part. So you're just fighting and pushing and pushing when just spend a little bit more money, get a good drill and you're not fighting it. So with this, you can use those cheap guns and at the end of the day, there are good cheap guns, but you have to research, you have to look into it, and you do need to spend a good, good money. Like just save up, because that's or uh, or just pay somebody yeah, just pay like somebody. him, because like he cares yeah. way more about how good of a job is has been done on it <laughs> than I can, because I don't know enough to, and I'm exactly. super picky. So if he's happy with it and he's looked at it in the sunlight and he's looked at it here and there and he gives it to me like I can't complain about anything but there's another really cool thing about that too yes he's not gonna do a bad job and then hand it to me because he's a good painter a lot of times that's your biggest hurdle is if you're gonna pay somebody to do it make sure that you're paying somebody that you know if they give you a subpar quality job that they're gonna stand behind their work and do any sort of retouching. I've sent parts back to every single painter I've ever had, and that's because these are stupid, complicated parts. Mm -hmm. And the number one rule that I learned, don't piss off your painters. <laughs> don't, don't make it so difficult. Don't give them crazy jobs where tape this and then do a little line right here. Oh no, that's not perfect. Oh no, that's not perfect. And keep sending it back. That's a great way to lose a good painter. So I try to keep things simple, straightforward, make sure that he knows all the things up front because it's not his fault if I didn't give him all of the rundown of what I expected to yeah. get back and then I get it back and he had to like do guesswork on there and I'm like, hey, how come you painted the bottom side? It's like, well, you didn't tell me that was the bottom side. Like, that's your job. You make sure that you tell the person what you want to see and then if you can come to an agreement and you're building lights on a regular basis, your job is to be a good headlight builder. Their job is to be a good painter. You two can work well together, just like me and Nico do. Mm -hmm. That's it. I try to bring people in that actually know what they're talking about with something very niche specific better than I do. And so I wanna do a lot more of that. Let me know what you think. In the comments below, let me know if there's anything I don't know, automotive or lighting related that you want to learn about that I don't do a lot. Like I had Jay from Sinister on, now I got Nico and I'm, I don't know, I, I know that there's a lot of other people that I have easy contact with and I want to bring you value from them. Let me know what kind of ideas you have. What do you want to learn? Let's do it.
I'm gonna put up some polls. You guys always respond really well when I ask you, what do you wanna see? What do you like more? Polls are awesome because it's fast for me to make them. It's fast for you to respond to them. So we're gonna do some polls coming up. What am I saying? question for you would you like me to talk at all about some of the stuff that goes into creating social media profiles and posting and just I don't know like the virality of TikTok and any of that stuff or does none of that matter because I try to only bring you value on Fridays and I try to talk business stuff now on Tuesdays so if you're not part of the membership stuff here on YouTube or over on the online courses we're gonna give you some options for that stuff too I'd love to see you inside especially for the live stream so uh, we're gonna talk more about that on a fully dedicated video coming up here on Tuesday so that is when I will see you next thank you so much smash the like button for me subscribe if you're not already and thank you again for helping me start off 2020 chasing it all down see you guys and one last thing I don't know why I look super high in this video but I don't even smoke weed anymore I don't even drink anymore like if I'm high I'm high on life Maybe I'm high in life.